Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up this awesome new PlayStation 1 emulator known as Duck Station. Now, I've been messing around with this for the last few weeks. There's been a few updates here and there, but overall, this is an absolutely amazing PlayStation 1 emulator, and it's pretty awesome to see a new emulator for these older systems in 2020. We've been able to work with a few other PlayStation 1 emulators for years, and they work great. I mean, don't get me wrong, those are awesome emulators, but this is just new and it does have some really awesome features built in, not to mention ease of use. Now before we get started here, I just want to give you a little rundown here. This is going to make it super easy to run your PlayStation 1 games upscale to 4K with internal upscaling. You can use OpenGL, DirectX 11, or Vulkan with this. It works with Windows, Linux, and Android, but as you can see here, I'm on a Windows 10 PC. And this is the standalone version. RetroArch also has a core that works just as well but I figured I'd go ahead and cover the standalone version here for Duck Station. If you're into emulation, I highly recommend giving this a try. I'm gonna give you a little demo here. So I just got finished playing Bloody Roar 2 with Duck Station. Real quick, let's go into the settings here. Under GPU, Hardware, set to Vulkan, and I have my resolution set at 4X, but I wanna go up a little bit higher, so we'll go to 6X here. Close this down, and I'm just gonna resume my game. It's going to compile these precast shaders for me, and there we have it. So it gets in there really quickly, and it looks absolutely amazing. It's pretty easy to set up. You will need a BIOS. Now, this does have a few quirks behind it. Um, unfortunately, at the time of making this video, it doesn't work with PVP files, but if you have a bunch of Ben and Q files laying around, you'll have no trouble getting your games up and running with Duck Station. So if you're ready to get Duck Station up and running on your system, let's go ahead and get started. I mean, first things first, like I mentioned, it doesn't work with PBP files, and that's kind of a big letdown right now, but a lot of people still might have some Ben and Q laying around. Can't tell you where to get your games? You can rip them from your own discs, I do recommend that, or you can do a quick Google search. I just got a folder on my desktop with a few games in here to test out. Ben and Q. Next thing you'll need is pretty important, and that's the PlayStation 1 BIOS. I use the SCPH1001 bin. Again, do a quick Google search. Very easy to come across. So let's go ahead and download the emulator. I'm just gonna open up the Edge browser here. Link for this is in the description. There's a lot of information in here. I would definitely recommend reading through this. Updates have been very frequent here. It's got a change log, features, everything like that. So I mean, basically everything you need to know about the emulator is located right here. Let's go ahead and get it downloaded. You'll need to scroll down a little bit, but I will leave uh, a direct link in the description just to make it a little easier on you. We're on Windows, so we're gonna head over to the latest version, latest development build. And as you can see, I mean, there's a ton to download. Just make sure you choose the correct one. Duck Station Windows X64 release, 19 megabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and place it on my desktop for easy access, so it's in downloads. Just place it right here. All right, so now that we have it downloaded, we need to extract it. I'm just gonna right click, and I'm gonna extract to my desktop. It'll be in this folder right here. Let's go ahead and open it up. You might notice that there are two different EXEs in here. We have the QT version and the SDL version. QT is the one we wanna work with at first just to get everything set up. And then from then on out, you can use that SDL version. That's the version you saw at the beginning of this video. I just think it looks really good. Before we do anything at all, let's go ahead and make a folder inside of here called BIOS. So we're just gonna right click, new, folder, and just name it BIOS. I'm gonna snap this to the right hand side. I'm gonna open that BIOS folder that we just created in the Duck Station folder. I'm gonna place my scph1001.bin BIOS right in here. This is the PlayStation 1 BIOS. Now, let's go ahead and start the QT version. Might look a little intimidating at first, but it's actually really easy to use. And once we're done with this, we can swap over to the SDL version. First things first, head over to settings. We need to set the location of our BIOS. So we'll go to BIOS settings. From here, BIOS directory. I'm gonna browse back to the folder we're in right now. So it's on my desktop, duck station, BIOS. That's the folder I want. I'm gonna select this folder and now we have our BIOS set up. Next thing we need to do is set up our controller. So we're gonna to go to controller settings. 
I have an Xbox controller connected. From here, you can set it up as a digital controller, analog controller, analog joystick, PlayStation mouse, things like that. For me, analog controller, DualShock. Button bindings. What we're going to do is choose one of these and then press the corresponding button on our controller. I'm going to use my analog stick as my up, down, left, and right, but you could set it up for a D-pad if you want. Up, down, left, right. And from here, just go through. Press the corresponding button on your controller once it's chosen. Got my controller set up. Now we can actually start playing the game before we get into any kind of upscaling. Just make sure everything's working correctly. Close this down. Now you can start a disc directly from here. So if I go to start disc, from here I'll just navigate to where I have my PlayStation games. On my desktop, Sony PlayStation, right here. Let's do Tekken 3. I'm going to choose the bin file. It's going to start Tekken 3 up for me. But as you're about to see, we're kind of in window mode. We definitely want to go full screen. We want to upscale this and we do want to change our back end. Now, if the back end you're using right out of the box works great for you, it should be DirectX 11. I would leave it like that, but we can also choose OpenGL or Vulkan. So I'm going to get into some gameplay here. Round one. And as you can see, I mean, I'm playing Tekken 3 right now. We're at the stock resolution. Definitely looks a little pixelated, but that's how PlayStation 1 games are. I'm just going to pause the game. Now what we want to do is mess around with a few of the settings. So we can go back up to settings, and this is all in real time, which is something I like. We don't have to reset the game. Let's scroll down to display settings. From here, I have my renderer set to Vulkan, but you can swap to OpenGL or DirectX 11. Personally, since this supports Vulkan and it does work really well, I'm leaving it right there. VSync, I want to leave this on so I don't have any screen tearing. You can change the aspect ratio, but these games were meant to be played at 4x3. If you don't mind a little bit of character stretching, 16x9 also works. But I'm going to leave it just like that. So from the display settings, that's basically what I choose here. Enhancement settings. Now this is where the internal resolution and some aliasing and filtering can come into play. Internal resolution scale can be set as high as 16x. For me, I'm going to 4K. This is 9x. Aliasing, I'm just going to go to 8MSAA. Texture filtering. Uh, bilinear looks really good, but I've had good luck with XBR. Now these settings here might not work for your system. If you have a lower end system, you might have to drop that resolution down and the aliasing down. But for the system I'm on right now, 4K, 8X MSAA, and XBR do work pretty well. As you can see, there's a lot of settings in here to mess around with, and it's really user preference. If you want to go with a widescreen hack, you can set that up, true color rendering and things like that. But for me, upscaling with filtering on is really where it's at. Now, if I go ahead and close this out, we're still not at full screen. You can always select it from up here, but if we go back into settings, general settings, start in full screen. Close. I'm actually just going to shut this back down. I'm going to start it back up. And it's going to go full screen for me. I'm upscaled to 4K. I have all that filtering on. And I just want to see how it performs. Now, without doing a side by side, it's really hard to tell how good this really looks. And even through YouTube compression, you really can't see it. But uh, 4K with these games, with that internal upscaling, and filtering looks really, really good. Some games just don't upscale as good as others, but I think Tekken 3 actually does a pretty good job at 4K. Definitely makes it a whole new experience. Okay, so now that you've started your first game, from the QT version, which we're in right now, you can actually set it up to show your games in a list here. If we go back to settings, game list settings we can add a folder i'm going to add that one on my desktop but for some reason all of my games don't show up it's a little weird so i'm going to choose yes here i have a lot more games than just two not exactly sure what's going on with that but i don't mind going in and starting a disc manually to play a game could be the format of the games i have or something like that 
but personally, I have not been able to fix this issue yet. It's a little odd. But all in all, when it comes to Duck Station, my favorite way to use it is actually the SDL version. It's just got that nice black background look to it. We can also go into the settings from here. As you can see, it's just got a totally different look. But we have all the settings we need to mess around with in here. You can go for your upscaling, you can go with your renderer, everything like that. Now for me, if I was to hit resume, it's going to start right back with that Tekken 3 game, exactly where I left off. But I'm going to go ahead and start another game. So I choose Start Disk. Let's go with Bloody Roar 2. And when you're choosing a game, make sure you choose the bin file and not the queue. If it choose the queue right now, it's just going to go black screen on me and never load in. So the bin file is where it's at. I've already got my controller set up because we did that in the QT version. Set it 4K, got all my filtering on, and it went full screen automatically for me. Bloody Roar 2, the new. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I test this game out in every PlayStation 1 emulator on basically every device because it is a harder PlayStation 1 game to run. This is actually my favorite fighting game of all time besides Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And I've played it on a ton of different systems. I can tell you right now that this looks so good at 4K with that filtering on. I've personally never been able to make it look this good with any other emulator. And I have tried with EPSXE, RPCS3, and even Beetle, but I just can't get it to look this good. Now this might not be the most accurate PlayStation 1 emulator, but it is a very compatible PlayStation 1 emulator and I highly recommend trying it out. In order to exit, just press escape on your keyboard, it'll bring us right back into the menu. And that's basically it, I mean that's the basic setup of Duck Station. If you love playing PlayStation 1 games at a higher resolution, definitely try this out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, really appreciate you watching, all links for everything I mentioned are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, but like always, thanks for watching.